Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> what hepatitis C is? No, no, I don't know what that is. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know what hepatitis C is? He hepa hepatitis? Do you know what hepatitis C is? I don't know. It's, uh, it's like a thing, it's a disease, and it's, I don't know if it's uncontrollable. If you never heard of hepatitis C, you're like most people. But most people have heard of HIV. Believe it or not, there's five times more cases of hep C than HIV in the United States. About four million people have hepatitis C in this country. Hepatitis C is all over the place, but most people don't know what it is. Isn't it a virus or something? Right, it's a virus. The thing about this virus though, is that it's really easy to catch. And how do you catch it? Blood! It's passed on by blood. Most people who have hep C got it through sharing needles. And not just needles either. You can get the Hep C virus by sharing syringes, cookers, cottons, and even rinse water. Hep C can be all over that stuff, even though you can't see it. If you shoot up, you probably got it. That's why you need to get tested. Some people think that they don't have Hep C because they don't share needles. But a lot of them don't understand that Hep C could be passed on from your whole kit. The needles, the syringes, the cotton, the cookers, the rinse water. All those things can carry hepatitis C. Even using straws for snorting can pass it on because blood from the inside of your nose can get on the tip of the straw. A crack pipe can get pretty hot around the mouth and create sores. And where there's open sores, there's blood. If you ever gotten a tattoo in prison, you could have gotten hep C from whatever was used as a needle. The virus could even be in the ink container. So if you ever share any of these things, you should get tested. Most of us users have Hep C. Like if you take 10 people who just started using, after a year, half of them will have it. If you was to look at them five years later, most of them will have it. Nine out of 10, that's a lot. If you went to a casino and you had to bet on whether or not you were exposed to Hep C, what do you think your odds would be? Well, if it was after, say, a year of using, your odds are about even. The chances of getting hep C after that amount of time are about 50-50. But who only uses for a year? If you're addicted, you keep using. You stay in the casino. So let's pick a more realistic stretch of time to be using for, like five years. If you had to bet all of your chips on this one, what do you think your odds would be? Well, your odds skyrocket. After five years of using, your chances of having hepatitis C are over 90%. If you're at a methadone clinic or a syringe exchange, look around. Odds are 90% have hepatitis C. So if you take 10 people who've been using for a year, five out of those will be hep C positive. After five years, nine out of 10 will be hep C positive, which is pretty much why you gotta get tested. Sometimes people, when they've been using for a long time, they don't like to get their blood drawn because it's hard to find their veins. But a lot of places got this thing now where all they do is prick your finger and get a little drop of blood. That's all it takes. That's your hep C test. If you've been diagnosed with hep C, you shouldn't worry about passing it on through food or eating utensils. You can't get it through casual contact like hugging, kissing, or shaking hands. I know you wouldn't know to look at me, but I'm an old time dope fiend. I guess I've had the virus about 20 years now. I'm healthy. I'm okay. I guess I'm like most people with Hep C. I feel fine. I have to be a little safer about some things, change my routine a little. I can't share my razors with anyone because you know there's blood on the razors. Because of the nicks and cuts you get when you're shaving. Sometimes your gums bleed a little bit, so you have to keep that toothbrush away. I got grandkids. One is two years old. She's all over the place, all the time. So I zip all that stuff up in my travel bag, because you know how kids are. When they come over, they get into everything. 
Because anything with my blood on it has to be taken care of, believe me. And I just go on with life and take it as it comes. Um, in about 1998, I think, I found out that I had the virus. I didn't know anything about hepatitis C or anything. One of my main concerns when I found out I had the hep C virus was whether or not I had passed it on to my daughter. Now my daughter was grown. She was an adult woman. How was I going to go tell my child this? I still had that shame that comes when, when something like this happens. I didn't know that pregnant women hardly ever pass it on to their children. I was so relieved when I found out how rare it was. The odds are less than 20 to 1. I, get, I have the joy of being here for my great grandbabies. And I just want to say to all you pregnant mothers out there, breastfeeding is fine. Breastfeed your babies. So tell me about hep C and sex. A lot of people are worried about sex and hep C. I want to make this totally clear. You can get hep C from sex, but it's rare. It's unlikely that it's going to happen. I was dating this guy for maybe three or four weeks, you know, and I found out I had the hep C. And, you know, I didn't want to tell him because I was afraid he'd think, oh my God, she's going to give me this virus, you know. And I talked to a doctor and she told me that hepatitis C usually doesn't get passed on by sex. And so I told him. And my boyfriend wanted to talk to my doctor to make sure. And so he did, and my doctor said, no, no, it's rare to get hep C from sex. That you usually don't get it that way, especially if you have a steady sexual partner. And I was taking the treatment the whole time. So now it's really no big deal, you know, because I'm cured. <laughs>